I'm Carolyn. Hi, I'm Megan. And this is Talking Resolve. And who are we talking about today? Well, today we've got Jane again. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jane's in her mid to late 20s. Um, and the question she submitted is, I will read it because it's a long one. I was hoping you could provide me some clarity around a pattern I've noticed in relationships. I find that when it seems like a relationship is growing closer, regular sleepovers, them leaving stuff at my place, I offer them a toothbrush. I want to, but at the same time, I'm hesitant in case I jinx it and it all goes away. And then a few days later, there seems to be a fight that results in me packing their stuff and giving it back to them. This happened again a few days ago. And honestly, the fight I picked with him wasn't even about him. Today, I handed him a bag of his stuff. I wanted a relationship with this man. I wanted a long-term relationship with another with another man or the other man that she did this with as well. Why am I doing this? It touches on an interesting topic, this one, because she, she uses the words jinx it. Uh -huh. And I think that we get into this mindset where we know we are sabotaging what we want. Mm. So whether you call it jinxing it, whether you call it self-sabotage, and there is a lot of confusion. Why do I do this when it's actually what I want? Mm. In this instance, I think she's getting ahead. She wants to get ahead. Mm. So I, I think she thinks this is going to end badly and I want to do this before I get hurt. So I'm going to end it now. And I'll, mm. and if I can't find a reason, I'll make one up mm. Mm. so that she doesn't get hurt. So I, I'd be really interested in where she's been hurt before. This is a flight and fight response. Yeah. This is a flight. Yeah. So she's running before she spotted the potential tiger and she's running before it even materializes. Yeah. Yeah. And she's create so she's creating it herself. She is, but not from the perspective of I'm going to jinx this, from the perspective of I need to keep myself safe. I need to yes. get the head of the curve. I need to run before they attack me. Yes. And this is what's really interesting in this is this is about self trust. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't trust that she can be okay if something were to happen, if something was, uh, if something goes bad, if they have an argument or whatever. She doesn't trust that she's got what it takes to cope with that eventuality. But does she also not trust she's got what it takes to cope with um, if it was successful? Yeah, I think that that's in there too. I mean, you can read a lot about people have a fear of success as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because they just don't know what to expect with that. And that's a whole nother topic is our expectations. Mm. But I think in this instance, yes, yeah, she's she's um, fearful about it being right because, mm. you know, if, if this relationship works, she's got a lot to lose. Mm. So there's even more hurt then. So you've got the hurt both of rejection if it doesn't work and the hurt of what you've got to lose if it doesn't work. Mm. so to save myself from the hurt let's just stop it now mm. but it's confusing because it's a real dichotomy I want this I don't want this yeah yeah so I think hers is a really interesting one and we see we see this with self-sabotage behaviors all the time but I don't think people realize that self-sabotage is flight and fight yeah we're getting ahead of the game. We're either fighting something or we're flighting something. It is a mobilizing response. Because, and mobilizing simply means we're doing something. Mm. So we're taking mm -hmm. an action to keep us safe. Yeah. So we're yeah. either creating a fight situation, which is exactly what she said. She picked a fight with him. Even yeah. though it was nothing to do with him, she found it. We. This is what we do when we don't have a reason to do something, but we want a reason. Mm. So she needed a reason to be in flight and fight in this relationship. So she made it up. Yeah. I need yeah. a reason and I need to fight on that reason. So and I think she's recognised enough to know that it's actually a, um ongoing pattern. Yes. She does she it. She's done it she's before. She's done it before. Yeah. 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 So. And then it's even more frustrating because she's like, why do I do this? She says at the end of her, her email, why am I doing this? You're doing this mm. because you're in flight and fight in relation to relationships. Mm. So who hurt you? Yeah would be my first question yeah so what relationship has she been in before that cost her mm. was she more invested than he was mm. did he cheat on her did she cheat on him uh you know what what was the circumstances around the first time 
a relationship was a problem for her, a romantic relationship. Does it always have to be romantic? I think in this instance it does because she's talking about them moving into her life and her space. Yeah. Um, And I imagine she doesn't do this with friends. She doesn't have friends sleeping over and she doesn't give them toothbrushes perhaps. Maybe she Um, does. But I'd be interested in, you know, what her history is. And she'll be like everybody and say, been rejected. We've all had the person that we had an interest in that didn't show any interest in us. Everybody's had that experience. Um, and I guess it's what, and I guess this is what we're talking about. It's what we, an experience like that, what we make that mean. Yes. About what, us. Exactly. That's yeah. what we talked about in the, our previous episode was the decision that we've made. So yeah. this is the meaning that we've taken from that experience. What mm. does this mean to me? And the question we ask ourselves when we ask this meaning, and again, this is not cognitively, we don't sit here and think about this in a very obvious way so that we know we're aware that we're thinking of this This is happening in the subconscious where we say, can I still be me given this has happened? So can I still be me and be okay and be safe? Not just safe. I get a bit annoyed when I see a lot of people focusing on safety. Safety is important, not denying it, but it's not the reason we're we're alive. Mm. It's not what we're about. That's no. you touched on it on our last session where we talk about the difference between the survival neurology and a living neurology. Mm. So life is not just about surviving it. No, it's about living it yeah. and all that comes with the living part of it. So mm. that aside, so I get a bit, yeah, that's a bugbear of mine. It's not just about being safe, uh, but the decision that we make, the meaning that we've taken from this, can I be me now? It's not just about can I be safe, although that is in there is it can I be this amazing, beautiful soul in a human, on a human journey? Can I still do that without limitation? Yeah. Or do I now feel like I can only be that under certain conditions? Mm. Yeah. And if I can only do that under certain conditions, we create our own limitations and then we have this situation where we've decided I can't be in a relationship. It's A, not safe for me to be in a relationship and B, It's not, I can't be myself in a relationship and be okay. Yeah. And I think people may listen to this and, you know, question, um, I'm sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought. You're allowed. Mm. Because I was trying to provide some context back to this this story, Um, you know, the living and the survival. Because ideally she wants the living, which would be yes, the living happily reality. ever after it potentially if that's what she wants in a relationship, which would be living. But the survival neurology or the surviving does take over because of unresolved experiences in her life or things that she hasn't been able to make sense of about how to be safe and living, thriving in with someone else in the picture. Yes. I mean, safety and uh, is primal. We're, we're, it is always going to be our first base. Mm. But once we've achieved that, what then? Mm. So um, if we feel like we've got a modicum of safety generally in our life, then we move on to the living experiences that we want to be able to have. We want to express joy, freedom, love, all of those sorts of things that come with our living neurology versus just surviving. I need food, water, shelter, food, water, shelter, and safety. Mm. Um, so it's it's moving moving your life on from that mm. I think is what we're talking about but when we what I'm talking about with the limitations that come from this decision is that I am limited in some way or I'm lacking in some way that means I can't have x mm. so if her experience has been I got rejected there's something wrong with me I don't want to feel rejected again so I'm going to get ahead of that game in the next relationship Mm. And that defense or survival neurology will dominate Mm. as much as you don't want it to. It will until you can change that meaning that you made Mm. until you can say, actually, that was just, that happened then. And that was just a thing. I Mm. don't have to have a response to it anymore. Until you can get to that point, you're going to, she's going to continue to do these behaviors. Mm. So Mm. helping her understand this is a survival response. Yeah. She's doing it because she wants to survive. Yeah. And she wants to survive a relationship in particular. Yeah. So that's why she keeps doing it. And that 
because it's so primal, we will do that first. It, and then the reason that we do it first, we can be optimistic. We can be hopeful about our future that maybe things would be different. But the reason we don't is because say we're walking down um, a pathway and we hear rustling in the bushes. This is we talk about primitive, primitive times, rustling in the bushes and a tiger jumps out in front of us and we have that, oh, moment. And uh, we, we automatically, without thought, go into how do I survive this situation? We automatically will run, we'll freeze, we'll do whatever we feel is going to be the best, have the best outcome for our survival. Now, say in this scenario, we've survived it. Phew, we didn't get eaten, tiger didn't see us. The next time we're walking down that path and we hear bushes rustling, we're not going to go, oh, maybe that's just birds. You know, it's a sunny day. I'm feeling good. It's probably birds. Because if it was a tiger, we'd walk past it and we'd get eaten. What mm. do we do? No, we would freeze and go, is that a tiger again? I better be really quiet or I'm going to turn around and go the other way, which is our flight and fight response. We'll immediately be thinking about what do I do in this moment right now? And it's more instinctual than anything else. You can find yourself responding without you even noticing is yeah. that you've turned and run. Uh, and that's because our whole neurology and biology is all geared towards surviving in that moment. That's why we have an amygdala. That's why we have a limbic system. That's why we have this ability to primitively respond in any situation we perceive as a threat, any situation. So while I might be talking about a tiger, the saber-toothed tiger in prehistoric historic times, the threat for, for Jane in this situation is what happened to me before could happen again. Yeah. So, and it's not necessarily the direct experience, although I think that's probably involved in here. She's had a relationship go sour in the past and mm -hmm. that's what she's trying to avoid, the way that that made it feel. So it's not that she's trying to repeat the relationship with that person mm. that she had. She's trying to avoid the way it made her feel when that relationship failed. Yeah. And it might have, it sounds to me, if she's doing this, it was so devastating at the time that she is, I'm totally want to avoid that again. I never want to feel like that again. Yeah. And so the avoidance strategy is you can't, I can't be in a relationship and be okay. Yeah. So it's not just about safety. It's being okay. I can't be me and be in a relationship because clearly when I did that before, it didn't end so well for me. Mm. So that's what this story is about and why she won't, won't go into a relationship again. She wants to get ahead of the curve. I don't want to feel like that again. I don't want to be hurt like that again. I don't trust I'll be able to cope. I don't trust I'll be able to survive it. Yeah. So I'm just going to get ahead of it. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I just had a delivery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. okay. um, so yeah, that's why I think she's, that's why I think she keeps doing this to herself. Yeah. So how does how does she change this? That's yeah. an interesting topic with this too. So first of all, I'd want to know ab about what it was like for her. Now she's she's someone that you know. Mm -hmm. So when I said she's probably had a devastating relationship failure in the past, is that on the mark for her? Yeah. 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 So um. So what does she do about it? If she was, obviously, I'd get her to go and see a resolve practitioner like you or I, and she's already seen you, so I know this. But if it was somebody listening, what can you do about this? I think it's you really need to understand the flight and fight response that you're having and understand that it is a flight and fight response mm. so that I know I'm trying to avoid the way, I, way it felt before. But now I want to ask the question, what does that make you? Mm. What does it, what did you decide it made you? What meaning did you get from this? Mm. So by meaning, I'm going to talk a little bit about meaning making and how we do this. It's in psychology. You can read up on it if you want, but I'm going to give you an example of what I call an unsupportive meaning making. So say I'm driving a car and have a car accident. First thing I want to do is, uh, and it's minor, no one's injured and it was just one car. I get out of the car and I go, oh, what just happened? So my first response is actually flight and fight. We go into shock. This is the, and then we discharge the freeze, which is all the shaking after you've had a, had a, um, a near miss and you realized you've survived. Uh, and then the next thing that we do is what just happened. So we might look around. 
Was there oil on the road? Was it raining? Whatever happened. And then once we once we've worked out what's happened, we then go, well, what does it mean? Does it mean I'm a bad driver? So if I was good to do this in a supportive way, I might go, accidents happen, the road was a bit wet, I should have perhaps been going a bit slower, but it's not going to change how I feel about me as a driver and me as a car owner. An unsupportive meeting would be, oh, my God, I've had an accident, I'm a crap driver. I, I Clearly I can't drive on roads that are wet or I can't drive on this road or I can't drive that type of car. So I'm not going to have a small car anymore, I'm going to have a bigger car. Or the, the other one might be, I can't make decisions about cars, purchases, mm. because I purchased that car and I had an accident. So this mm. is the kind of snowballing that we can do when we're trying to create a meaning from, a, from something that's happened. And that's an unsupportive meaning. And what that happens when, we're, when it's unsupportive, we now have a limitation. I now can't do X because of that experience. Mm. So now anytime I'm triggered into X, I'm going to go into a flight and fight response. Mm in order to protect myself from feeling the way I did before. So her X have... may have been like X meaning like... The letter X. Yeah, and not like X because we're talking about <laughs> relationships. But her X may have been um, that she lost herself in the relationship and she didn't know how or she felt overwhelmed or over, you know, I mean overpowered or um, there's all sorts of things that could set up you not not actually like from a subconscious perspective, not wanting to be in another relationship on the conscious, on a conscious level, she does, but the subconscious has decided it's not safe for her. So yeah. um, for whatever reason, so then she's creating um, scenarios that she can get ahead of the game and fight. She can get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Before she gets hurt. So she and doesn't go back into that, whatever set that first relationship or, you know, it doesn't have to be the first one, but the one that the one that set this up. Yeah. yeah. But and then you said I would question what gets her into a relationship like that in the first place. So it's interesting. That's an interesting point because you said she lost herself. Yeah. And um, I think this is what sometimes we do. Sorry, I said um. I think sometimes we think we need to be a particular way to be accepted. Yeah. And because acceptance is so part of our bonding drive, we know we need to be part of a tribe in order to survive. Mm. We just, it's so innate, we don't even think about it. And we do that because we, we've we learned from an evolutionary perspective, collaboration in a bonded group means that uh, we're going to survive. You you told me the story about the, was it the anthropologist that was yeah, saying? Yeah, Margaret Mead, I think her name is. Or what? Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to tell that? story just that that she was in a um a, she's a professor and she was in a classroom and they were asking what she thought the first sign of civilization were was along these lines and pe I guess people might have thought like wheels or bowls or I don't know and she said um that a healed female I think it was a healed yep like bone. Bone. Mm. and the reason is because someone had taken time to care for that person, um, bring them food, um, care for their wound. Before that, they would have died. They would yes. have been left to the elements. They can't feed themselves. There's no one to help them look after their broken leg, um, and they would have died. Yeah, so, yeah. That so was... it's a it's a fundamental drive that we have to oh. be in this collaborative bonding. So this is this is Jane in this situation. Her desire to be in a relationship is both driven by survival and her desire to not be in a relationship is also driven by survival. So mm. she's got like the dueling banjos happening here yeah. with wanting to be in a relationship because she understands at a subconscious level, can't don't even think about it, that I need to be in this position. But the, the survival of her from her lived experience is no, you don't want to be in a relationship because you won't survive. Yeah. So she keeps initiating and getting and starting them, but then the previous experience then starts to dominate. And then that's when she, she goes, no, I, I can't, I can't do that again. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to touch again on the point that you said she lost herself, this idea that we have to be a certain way and why I talked about that with bonding is 
and we see this a lot with toxic positivity on social media and social media generally is the veneer that we feel we need to present in order to be accepted Mm. because the risk of not being accepted is so dire Mm. that to our own survival that we feel that we need to be able to do this Mm. so that she thinks if I'm going to be in a, a bonded relationship I need to behave in a particular way If that's at odds with who she is, that's just going to create a whole another layer of confusion. Mm. I can only be in a relation. So the decision, the meaning, I can only be in a relationship if I behave in this way. Mm. But she knows she can't maintain that. That's hard to maintain the facade. Mm. So then she goes into, well, that's just going to take a whole lot of energy to maintain. And what if they find out that I'm not this person? Mm. and it's going to cost me again yeah so I, I I'm just not going to do that yeah yeah no it all I mean knowing her it all would resonate and I'm going to get some feedback from her after um she watches this hopefully um but yeah I think it, I feel like it can be really confusing for people to understand why we create the opposite of what we actually want to experience. And I think that's the, I, I guess, bring that word dichotomy back in. It's, it's, I want a relationship, but it's too painful from a subconscious perspective. Yeah. And I think that people say, why do I, why, like, if that's what I really want. Why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I do that? Because I want to avoid is, the this pain. This is helping of it. them understand that there's yeah. it's, there's a deeper layer to it and a deeper yeah. level to it and a decision you've made with limited resources or, you know, limited based understanding. on what was yep. limited understanding based on what was, you know, where you were in your life at the time, mm. and until you can have more awareness and understanding around that stuff, it'll keep happening until. But you, you can change it. You can change it. You can and change it. And it's not it. it's not years of therapy either. You can no. change it. Yeah. But you've got to understand where it's coming from and how what sort of decision you made. Really, it comes down to what did you decide about yourself? Mm. I can only be in a relationship when. And she what finished that on... sentence. Yeah. You know, I can only be in a relationship when I'm, you know, yeah. finish the sentence. Yeah. And then if those, the way, so she said, the only way I can be in a relationship is if I'm social. Mm. And then my question is, so are you a social person? Well, mm. no, I'm not. Mm. So now there's, that gives you some insight into, so now you're fighting yourself in a relationship in order to maintain a relationship. That's going to take a lot of energy and yeah. effort. Yeah. And it's going to create problems. Yeah. Because you're going to have and to it defend it. It might not be problems it. that you can necessarily see in the moment, but they're like potentially working away yeah but this is the argument show up at some point yeah this is the argument you don't see me mm. and you're like well how can i see you if you've never shown you yeah but the person will feel unseen mm. because not real not connecting that they're being presenting a veneer the whole time yeah. they expect the other person to be able to see through the veneer without mm. showing them that that it's a veneer in the first place yeah So there's all sorts of complications that come from this. But, yes, her first thing is what happened in the previous relationship? What decision did you make about yourself in relation to relationships? How you have to be now in order to be safe? Yeah. And that will give us some answers. And then, of course, strategies are really going to help here that when she feels the urge to pack it all up, that's the opportunity to have a conversation with the person, Mm. you know, to try some communication and say, I've been burnt before badly. Mm. And I'm feeling the urge to end what we've started, even though I think we could we could have something here. Yeah. And, do you and, think, and this isn't just related to this Jane, there's other Janes out there, do you think they're not seeing the person that they could, I mean, I don't think that's the case in this situation, um, but they're not seeing, they're, they're just not on the horizon, the person that they could potentially have that relationship with because they do match the person, match with the person who is going to, be able to run away from not be emotionally available not oh, so they're choosing somebody that they can't have a relationship with yeah deliberately yeah, yeah that's a, and that's then a, making that's a it mean something strategy. about yeah. themselves again oh it's a defense strategy that's yeah. protection again yeah so and then say oh, well they weren't good enough or i'm not good enough and mm. see i just keep attracting the wrong sort of person to me yeah um 
but are you doing it because it's it's helping you defend better yeah yeah which I think so, is another layer to this I don't know if that's the case this time but I think if there's for certainly what I see um in oh clinic- I could um, we could talk for days on what could be going here. Yeah, like yeah. All the different options that could be going. Yeah, but I think it's good to to have a look, like inject a few different ones, like maybe not relative to this, Jane, but other people out there um, mm. that might think, oh, hang on a minute. It's not yeah, so I think, I think educate yourself about flight and fight. Understand mm. how it actually, it's such a driver of behaviour. Mm. And if you can go, I'm starting to feel that I'm in flight and fight. Mm. There's a really simple exercise that you can do, which we've talked about before, uh, which is just to moderate that vagus nerve, which is responsible for your flight and fight, is to adjust your breathing. And I know everybody talks about, oh, breathing exercises, here we go again. But it is so quick. Our brain responds to changes in our breathing so fast because it's so critical to survival. What's the saying? You can survive three, three months without food, three weeks without water, or it might be three weeks without food, three days without water and three minutes without oxygen, without breathing. Mm, yeah. So our our body is really tuned in to whether we're breathing. So being able to moderate it in the moment is really helpful. Mm. And all you do is you just do a breathe in, breathe in again, and then breathe out. Mm. And you do it two or three times. It doesn't always work, but if you're feeling it in the moment, that can be a really quick way to just reset. So you go, mm. And I guess if you listen to enough of our YouTube and podcasts, you'll be able to start to recognize when you are in fight flight. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not the only goal. One goal. No, it is, is a goal. <laughs> it is a goal. Know yeah. what flight and fight is and what it looks like for you. Yeah. Uh, and then start to work out those meanings that you've created that's yeah. maintaining that flight and fight response. Mm. Because yeah. it's not, it's not somebody else doing this to you. It's not the guy here. That was the wrong guy from her. Mm. Really not. Even in the situations where you go, I'm attracted to the wrong guy. It's not really even about that. It's about the response that you're that you have. And yeah. that's what you have control over. You don't have control over what other people do say or anything else, but you do have control over how you respond to that. I'm gonna qualify that, say, unless you're in flight and fight. Yeah. If you're in flight and fight, your choices of responses are significantly limited. Yeah. And I think that's one of the confusing messages out there. That we're trying to debunk, or yes, so just think it, differently. No, you yeah. can't when you're in. You can't when you're in. You just can't. Mind. Yeah, we're you might be able to in certain areas because this is contextual. So we might be able to in certain areas of life. You might be killing it at work. You might be, you know, really good with your athletics or sport of choice. And then it comes to relationships, and you go, no, can't no crap. And that just comes back to your experiences. So in that example, your experience may have been your f- first job was awesome. Mm. You were validated and valued. Mm. So you've built confidence from that and you're able to carry that forward. The first sporting event that you played, you, you found you're maybe not good at the first one, but good at the second one and you really enjoyed it. Mm. And there's your validation I'm, and building on your sense of self. Then you have your relationship that totally goes to hell in a handbasket yeah. and you realize, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, that may be something I'm not good at. You know what? I'm just going to avoid that. Mm. But the underlying drive that we have as being human to bond really makes that difficult to be able to do. Mm. But I think you can even contextualize relationships. Well, we can, because it could be I'm okay in family relationships, I'm okay in friendships, but I'm not okay in this kind yeah, of. Well, how many, how many clients have you had that have great family relationships in their, in their family they've created? Mm. but have terrible relationships with their siblings and parents mm. yeah. or other family members that they've yeah. got. Yeah. Which That's can, funny. I mean, I find that quite amazing when I, when I deal with somebody that, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say deal with, cause it's not that mm. when I work with somebody who's, you know, talks about the level of family dysfunction that they grew up with and yet they've got such good values and they're able to create their own family and have a very positive and um, loving family. And you think this just reminds me that this is innate for us. We actually have an innate knowing about how things should be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's what I think she probably, why I think she's got these, Jane has got these dueling banjos is she knows what it should be Mm. as an innate knowing, not as a cognitive thinking knowing, 
she knows how it should be and she just can't it's out of her reach she can't grasp it and she doesn't understand why Mm. but it is in response to a previous relationship that she hasn't moved past and hasn't got over because Mm. she hasn't been able to change the way she views that relationship Mm. what does it mean to me that that happened Mm. what decision did she make about herself I must be this for this to have happened I must be terrible at relationships for this to have happened yeah whatever that is. And she can, she, you know, if she wanted to just sit and have a think about those, not judge the answers, but just write down, you know, this is what I think is happening. That's all great. It's all moving you forward towards Mm. changing this. Mm. I think that's a big one too, the non-judgmental reflection. Yeah. Just be be kind to yourself. Just is. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. I hope that covers it for Jane. (laughs) And um, if you like what you've seen today, give us a like or tell your friend if you think they're struggling in relationships, tell them to give us a watch and, yeah, what and else comment. do you do on YouTube? Comment. Comment, please, please. Yeah. We'd, love to, we'd love to hear what you've got to yeah, say. Yeah, I'd question. love to start to hear some feedback, see what everybody uh, And if you've got a question, just put it in the comment below with a question mark at the beginning of your comment so we can find them easier. Mm. Um, here I am anticipating there'll be lots of comments and also I think, <laughs> there might we, be one. I think people might start to want to ask submit a question so uh, we will work out how to do that might be yeah email. yeah because we uh, obviously if you're if you want to be talked about um, you'll be called Jane mm. or we'll find an appropriate name for a guy mm. uh, maybe John um, and uh, you have to be prepared that you know you somebody might be able we'll to also work find out an appropriate non-binary name if that's appropriate as well <laughs> yes yeah yes happy with whatever whatever you want yeah. to be called and just yeah. sharing as much as you're happy to, to to put on but it would be lovely if um we can have that sort of interaction that would be yeah. great okay all right well, thanks thank for you watching. yeah nice, nice to talk to you again megan you too. okay <laughs> see you later bye it's all right